What's up bitches? This is part 2 of my triple grenade launcher loadout series. If you haven't seen part 1, I will link it right now on screen. In part 1 we went over the weapons for the loadout such as god rolled ignition codes and optimal heavy options, so definitely check that out if you're interested in any of that information. In this video we will be taking a look at the mods we are going to be slotting in to turn this build from a meme into the envy of all your friends if you have any. We will be looking at mods from this season's artifact, war might sell mods, and just some generic everyday mods. As I mentioned earlier, in the last video I covered weapons that might be worth chasing to really tie this build together. With that being said, for my build I will be running an ignition code with hard launch, implosion rounds, ambitious assassin, and frenzy with a velocity masterwork. I'll also be using the fighting lion obviously, and interchanging the memory interdict with hard launch, spike grenades, impulse amplifier, and danger zone with a reload masterwork, and an interference 6 with hard launch, spike grenades, field prep, full core, and a handling masterwork. Note that this build will be on my Hunter, but for this build, this can be applied to any class. Let's jump into it. So like I said, I will be on my Hunter and I will be using Stasis because I lack character and for my Exotic, I will be using the Dragon Shadow to keep the auto reloads and the high handling up as much as possible. The build I will be going over is most likely going to be the build that I will be using most of the time when using triple grenade launchers. Even though I am using my hunter, towards the end of the video I will be quickly going over exotics and subclasses for warlock and titan. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the aspects I'll be running in fragments and why I chose them. The aspects aren't the most important part of the build, but they do add some value. For my first aspect I will be using touch of winter with cold snap grenades. I chose cold snaps due to their ability to instant freeze targets and that then will trigger my Whisper of Hedron's Fragment. For my second aspect I will be using Winter Shroud. Having the slow be applied after a dodge is an added bonus and comboed with shurikens can apply a freeze as well as proccing Hedron's as well as netting me a melee charge with Gambler's Dodge. My fragments are as follows. Whisper of Hedron's for a damage buff. This will be up a lot due to our ability to constantly freeze. Whisper of Impetus. I love this fragment for my hunter specifically. This comboed with Dragon Shadow and Gambler's Dodge allows me to keep shurikens up which then lets Let's me reload either my heavy after a shuriken hit or my ignition code which is so valuable for many scenarios. I also use whisper of chains as my last fragment and I mainly use it for the recovery boost. However taking less damage near frozen targets will add value. If you are running stasis with three launchers these fragments can be interchanged freely depending on what class you are running. If you respect yourself and are running a light based subclass I would recommend either bottom or top tree tether for hunter specifically. Let's talk about armor and mods. This is where this build will truly start to shine. For my stats I will be running 100 mobility to keep my slowing dodges and shurikens up as much as I can, and 100 recovery because that shit is awesome. As for my armor, for my void helmet I will be running one grenade launcher ammo finder. After doing some testing I found that having two grenade launcher ammo finders seems to negate the ability to find special finder bricks. One finder will let you find both heavy and special finder bricks. In addition to these mods I will also be running the power of Rasputin Warmind Cell mod. This mod will net you bonus damage for enemies near Warmind cells. This is extremely potent against clusters of adds. For my void arms I will be running one grenade launcher loader. Running two of these mods provides diminishing returns and is really not necessary and you will definitely want to keep that combat mod socket open. I will be using Warmind's Decree in this slot. This is the mod that allows void splash damage to occasionally generate a Warmind cell. It seems to be the same rate as Warmind cells would generically spawn but allows the fighting lion in my memory interdict to spawn cells. If you do have an open mod socket on your arms I would definitely recommend fastball but I would like to warn you though that once you go fast you never go back. For my arc dragon shadow I will be using one grenade launcher reserves. Having two of these will also provide diminishing returns so I do recommend the one. I will also be using a concussive dampener to negate a lot of the bullshit AoE damage from adds. This can be interchanged with any of the other damage resist mods depending on what activity you're going to be doing. I will also be using global reach to extend the range of my war mind cell effectiveness. For my void boots I will be using two grenade launcher scavengers even this will provide somewhat diminishing returns as well, however extra ammo is always valuable. On top of these, one burning cells mod will be socketed in. This allows a burst of solar energy to be created after popping a cell which is good for a group of adds. Here's a clip showing the power of burning cells, the power of Rasputin comboed with the Hunter Stasis Super.
And lastly, for my art class item, I will be using two outreach to keep my shurikens up as much as possible. This provides, you guessed it, diminishing returns as well, but I do have the slots open to do it. I will also be using powerful friends to get that extra bump in mobility. If you don't need the mobility bump, I would recommend using any of the following Warmind cell mods. Warmind's longevity, Warmind's protection, or cellular suppression. However, since we have a solid stack of Warmind cell mods already, I think my go-to would be Breach and Clear for the debuff. Breach and Clear stacked with buffs such as Stasis Damage Boost, Frenzy, or Vorpal Weapon make for quick work of majors and bosses. So that's pretty much going to be it for this build. I'm going to let some gameplay run in the background of me using this loadout in a Battlegrounds while I discuss the other classes. So for the dress character, there's definitely a few exotics worth mentioning here, Nezarek Sin being the first one that comes to mind. Nezarek Sin improves ability regeneration upon avoid damage kill. This is going to be great on any subclass, but Slova Bomb or Devourer will work even better due to being a void based subclass. I would recommend 100 Recovery and 100 Discipline for this exotic and for the next one that I'm about to mention, that one being Getaway Artist. I have used Getaway Artist numerous times in Crucible and PvE activities and is not so much very powerful but extremely fun. This can be used with the Mean Beam or even Arc Buddies to provide additional fun because it doesn't seem like Warlocks have enough of that going on right now. Controverse Hold would be a fantastic exotic to use as well. With Warmind's Decree and the Fighting Lion, you would essentially be shitting out Warmind cells. I want to throw Boots of the Assembler here as well due to some of the healing options in the game. I am sure there's a healing build that can be made here with Fire Team Medic as well as Well of Radiance comboed with these boots. For Titans, Doomfang Pauldron with Middle Tree Sentinel Melee could be a fun build which could also spawn Warmind cells with Warmind's Decree. Ashen Weight could be interesting as well. You could slot in the mod that allows Solar Splash damage to create Warmind cells and Warmind's Decree to have options to create cells. Armamentarium with a void subclass for an additional void grenade could be a great option as well. There are obviously many other neutral game titan exotics worth using such as Syntheseps and Dune Marchers, but all of these would be some of my go-tos. Well that is pretty much going to wrap things up for this two-parter. If you watched until the end, thank you for sticking around and watching, and I appreciate all the support everyone is giving to me and my channel. I'd love to hear more about some of the cool stuff you guys are doing with these new fighting lion mods in the comments. Until next time.